on the lower arm where we were planning to paddle 1,000 kilometers. Somewhere along the way, I started to get a really sick feeling in my stomach. And I said, I think we need to take off at our halfway point. Um, and that halfway point was sort of the last spot that we could take out before it was like a no turning around situation, um, before we delved deeper into the wilderness and the weather was going to be getting more intense, the monsoon weather, and our sat phone wasn't working, and all the translators that were supposed to paddle with us had bailed. And there were all of these things, these logical reasons, but no matter how much I logic through it, I really just had this sick feeling in my gut. Uh, and so halfway through our objective on the Lower Amor, we took off in the city of Komsomolsk. And we really weren't sure if we were making the right choice. The one thing about landing on that beach as well, we met this lady who happened to speak perfect English, and she said to us, you know, why would you come to a place that even God forgot? And that's probably one thing that's always stuck with me, because even though, I mean, Komsomolsk is a pretty big city, but Far East Russia, you're still very, very much disconnected from the world. So we did end up making it to the ocean, though. But it ended up being much less romantic than my image. Uh, my image was like paddling into the Amor Delta on a beautiful, clear day, like wind in our hair. And you know, we were just like total summit moment. Um, but we ended up just taking a ferry. We, we were able to find a local ferry. And it took us a day to get downstream. And then we hitchhiked the rest of the way. <laughs> and so we hitchhiked the rest of the way. And we ended up in this old um, fishing village that was sort of falling in on itself. And we quickly realized we were the only people that this place mattered to. Uh, and for us, it meant something very different than it did for everybody else. It was the end of this really long, powerful journey uh, and, and the end of uh, a dream that we had wanted to see through. And this is the image of us leaving Russia. Uh, we flew back to Alaska. And you can see, like, it's a big, big river. And basically, about a week later, we find out uh, the greatest flood in 120 years actually hit the region. When they showed the before and after images, what we were paddling looked like a creek on a map. And you know now, this, this thing's pretty big. Because there's no big mountains really around, it's quite flat, it was like 50 kilometers wide. And that's a lot of water to be moving around. So thankfully, Amber's intuition was on target. So this is a cairn we built for Zach over the Onan River. And uh, we found a lot of little ways to celebrate him as we went. He was such a vibrant, vibrant human being. And he was always laughing and dancing and just in the flow of his life. And so I think if there's anything that I've learned in his life and in his passing, it's that no matter how hard what we face in our life is, no matter how crazy and difficult things get, there is always something for us to celebrate. And I think that's what we really tried to do in Mongolia and on this trip.